Hi, today I will talk about traveling faster than light. We all heard numerous times that it is impossible to have a speed greater than that of light, that the speed of light is the highest possible speed in nature. However, one needs to be more precise. It all depends on the context. So there are actually different ways in which we can travel faster than light already in accordance with the physics that we know today. So I will today speak about four different ways according to which one can travel faster than light. And the first one of these possibilities is actually cheating. So when we speak of traveling, it is impossible to travel faster than light, we think about propagation of light in vacuum. When we are not in vacuum, then the properties of the material described by the index of refraction of that material actually change the speed of propagation of light in that material. So if we have a material which has such properties that it slows down light significantly, then we can actually be faster than it, not in vacuum, but in that medium. So if this V is speed of light in some medium, then it is connected to the speed of light in vacuum. So this is the speed of light in a medium. This is the speed of light in vacuum. And the connection is given by this constant. Constant which is specific for a given material. And this constant is actually called the index of refraction of the material. So what we need to have then is a material which will have large enough index of refraction so that this speed of propagation of light in that material can become arbitrarily small. And if we choose a material which has this large and large index of refraction, then we can actually be faster by some movement than this speed of light propagating in that material. So this was relatively simple. The basic uh, idea is that we need to be careful and to have on our mind the delimitation to travel with the speed which is less than the speed of light is valid for the vacuum. The second option we have in order to be faster than light is actually take into account quantum field theory effects. Now, without any material, so in vacuum. But we also need to have for this kind of effects a gravitational field. So we just have light propagating in a gravitational field. That is what we consider. And when light propagates in a gravitational field, then if this gravitational field is strong enough, there will happen some effects which are predicted by the quantum field theory and which will change the speed of light so that it can, it can be actually greater or less than the speed of light normally. So when I say normally, I mean the usual value of the speed of light. No? So as I said, this can change according to quantum effects when light is propagating in gravitational field. What happens is that for strong gravitational fields, we never observe this effect up to now, but uh, we think it may exist due to the quantum theory and the calculations that were performed. Then what happens is that a type of an interaction between light and gravitational field, which is a quantum effect, shows up. It is called of non-minimal coupling between uh, gravitational field and the electromagnetic field which describes the light. So according to quantum physics, if we think of light as consisting of photons, photon can undergo a transformation into electron and positron pair. Now, when this transformation happens, 
then the light acquires a characteristic length. And this characteristic length is actually the length of the electron or of the positron. And as gravitational field changes around every point, it is not a homogeneous field in general, then this electron and positron will experience what is called the tidal force, the change in gravity at which happens uh, along its length. So in this way, the propagation of light will be affected by the gravitational field in which this propagation happens. And when one does all these calculations, then the result is that one can have either photons traveling faster than the usual speed of light or photons traveling slower. So in this way also, we can, at least in principle, by some other effect, be faster than light. Then we have third option. And then in, in third option, we do not consider any kind of a material, we do not consider any kind of a, spe a special uh, field, no? We just consider space-time, light which is propagating on the space-time. So general theory of relativity says space and time are not separated, they are united in one single entity called space-time, which describes the whole uh, reality that we experience. It gives a framework for this whole reality. So then, what is important to know is that what is limited by the special theory of relativity is uh, propagation of objects in a space-time, in a space-time of special theory of relativity. But what is not limited is the propagation of the space-time itself. So if this space-time is not static, that means if this space-time, for instance, expands or contracts, then the speed of this expansion and contraction can be much greater than light. There are not, no limitations that we know, theoretically, at this time, which would lead to this, this sort of limitation. So actually, the whole space-time can expand faster than light. Then, of course, the thing is, we are again positioned and at the very space-time, so everything in this space-time expands as the whole space-time expands, so we do not actually observe that we can be faster than light in a given space-time just due to this uh, effect. But this leads us to our last possibility, which is perhaps the most intriguing, and that is that we can actually be faster than light in a given space-time if we arrange a space-time in a very specific manner. So we arrange the space-time so that it contracts in front of the observer and expands backward of him so that actually it adds up to his effective total velocity, so that with respect to the light traveling on the very same space-time, it can be greater than the speed of light, the speed of that observer. So you can just imagine that you have a space-time, and then you arrange it in such a way that, that one point on that space-time is actually moving, and then the movement of the whole space-time is added at that point, and that, for instance, at other point, it is just uh, normal or it is just uh, expanding, so that actually one who is back up with this movement of the space-time itself can transpass the light and can have the total effective movement, which leads to the overall speed, which is greater than light. So this special type of arrangement of the space-time which enables this is uh, called usually warp space-time or Arcobier space-time. So, but there is one issue with this, and the issue is that to construct such space-time, you need to have a special type of matter or some special type of effects. So, such kind of space-time is in accord with Einstein's general theory of relativity. 
it is in accord with the equation, the equations, the Einstein's equations. But uh, to sustain this space-time, you need some special properties of matter or some additional effects which we still do not know how to achieve. So we do not know how to construct such hypothetical space-time that would enable traveling faster than light. So what is the issue here? The forms of matter that we know usually satisfy what we call energy conditions. So there are different energy conditions, but we are focused on the one called weak energy conditions for the sake of this discussion. So the weak energy condition says that the energy density needs to be greater or equal to zero, and that the sum of the energy density and the pressure of matter needs to again be greater or equal than zero. So we can call and understand this as two demands which are contained within the weak energy principle. So all the forms of matter that we know and observe are respecting these two conditions. But in order to have this type of a warp space-time that we talked about, these two conditions, they need to be violated. And the matter which would violate them is called the exotic matter. So, and we don't know, is it existing or not? So it, this is completely hypothetical. We know of some physical processes which actually violate such type of conditions, and one of them is quantum field theory effect called the Casimir effect. So in Casimir effect, you have two plates, two metallic plates in vacuum. So usually metallic plates would uh, attract or repel in accord with the charge which is uh, on the plates. You know? But here, we assume there is no charge on the plates. So the, the plates are empty of charge and placed in vacuum. But then according to quantum effects, there will be, because of the quantum fluctuations, an effect which will cause those plates to attract each other effectively. And the whole effect actually violates these two conditions that I wrote. So maybe such type of quantum effects as Casimir effect could help to construct such type of a space-time where one could travel faster than light. Respecting all the laws of physics that we know. So this is not violating all the fundamental laws in any way that is important to stress. But we don't know also how such effects as Casimir effect, which is just a microscopic or quantum effect, can be, so to say, amplified and used to support the global structure of space-time that is completely unknown. So all of this last intriguing possibility is uh, physically completely fine and justified, not contradicting anything in theoretical physics, in general theory of relativity or quantum physics. We still do not know how actually to construct it because we don't know how to effectively violate these two conditions.